G'day chemists. So let's talk about a particular equilibrium reaction, the cobalt two chloride reaction. So this is a it's a pretty it's a pretty cool one actually, and it, it involves a rather dynamic and exciting color change. So our learning goal here is to understand the equilibrium nature of the hydrated or non-hydrated uh, cobalt chloride uh, equilibrium and we'll know that we understand this well enough when we can actually predict what the changes are going to be you know to that equilibrium nature depending on the stress we apply so here's your vocabulary if i could just get you to pause the video here and, and write this down we'll have something to refer back to as we move through now le chalier's principle or le chatelier's or uh, it doesn't matter how you say it as long as you try and say it with a french accent so like le chatelier or something like that like whatever works for you um what this means is that once something is at equilibrium, that means it's in a closed system and it's a reversible reaction and it's allowed time to reach that equilibrium. If you change it, it will move to a new equilibrium position. Now, your equilibrium position is like the ratio of your products to reactants, the concentrations of your products to your reactants. So, you know, if you've got like this many uh, reactants, but this much products, you might have a change in position that shifts it like that or like that or back to here. So those ratios are movable and that's sort of what Le Chatelier's principle gives us. It's kind of like, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of like one of the core tenets of chemistry. It's kind of like, I, I always think of this one as sort of the natural selection of chemistry. If we want to compare it to a biology unit, that, that idea of once we understand this, a lot of our chemistry really starts to make sense. Now, the cobalt-2 chloride equilibrium, let's have a quick look. Here we have the complex cation, the cobalt with six waters bonded around it, and in solution we have four chloride ions. This is a pink solution, that's why it's written in this color. And it can exist in equilibrium with cobalt chloride, just the, the anion itself, so which is a complex anion, and six waters. And cobalt chloride itself, when it's dehydrated, which means the waters aren't bonded to it, is blue. And here you can see one which is nearly all of that blue solution. And here we can see one which is nearly all of that pink solution. And sometimes we'll see this where the ratios are more even, and that makes it, that'll make it a purple color. And one thing we can see here is that because of the delta H, this is a, so delta H is positive, which means this is an endothermic reaction going in this direction. So going from cobalt chloride plus, sorry, cobalt hydrate to, and plus four chlorides to cobalt chloride, we call that the forward reaction and the reverse reaction is going from cobalt chloride plus six waters to cobalt hydrate ion plus four chlorides. So a system in equilibrium will move the equilibrium position to reduce the impact of any stress applied, pressure, heat, concentration, and volume. Now pressure and volume are related, and one of the things we know about equilibrium is that pressure and volume only really come into it when we're talking about gases, and there are no gas molecules here, so we can kind of ignore the pressure and volume one altogether, because we can't really compress a, a water. So let's have a look. So again, equilibrium position is which side of the, of the double arrow is going to be dominant, which will have the highest concentrations. So if we add hydrochloric acid, one of the cool things that happens is HCl is added. This gives us more chloride ions. So the chloride ions increase and the solution decreases the presence of these chloride ions by moving the position to the right. So we'll actually make more cobalt chloride um, complex and our solution will become more blue. That's kind of awesome. Um, if the temperatures increase, remember this is an endothermic reaction, the system will absorb the energy and move the system to the right. So again, it'll become more blue. If we decrease the temperature, the system will release energy and that will move the equilibrium position to the left. So it will become pinker. Now, um, so what else could we add? If we add, oh, Amazingly, right? This is where it gets a bit counterintuitive until you think about it. If we add more cobalt um, hydrate just as a solution, boom, drop that in. One of the really cool things that happens is that it starts to move the reaction to the right. It moves it 
So it becomes bluer. So initially it'll go bright pink, then it'll change to blue because it tries to use up those extra cobalt hydrate ions. However, if we add more water, that'll drive it to the pink side. If we add more cobalt chloride, it'll add it to the pink, it'll move it towards the pink side as well. So it's kind of awesome. It's a really cool idea, Le Chatelier's principle. Um, yeah, anyway, I hope that made sense. If it didn't, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe so you can keep up what you're doing. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye now.